Already the pressure is building for Georgia and Agina Simpkins. Julie Ballard with that fall off the beam earlier scored only a 9-3. Georgia would love to toss that score out. Simpkins has to avoid disaster here. And it puts a lot more pressure on you when you're going up on the balance beam, knowing that a teammate has fallen and you really, you have to hit. Julianne, you might have noticed that uh, Simpkins was chewing gum. Some of us can't walk and chew gum at the same time, and look at what she's doing up there. Well, I want to see her blow a bubble during this move. That handspring layout backflip, just a tiny little wobble. That handspring quarter turn, she missed the handstand slightly. Last year, Simpkins developed a cramp before she competed on the beam. She ended up falling. The team was distracted, and that's where Georgia really fell apart. The jump combination, you'll see a lot of those. Switch sleep right into immediate jump. That's a requirement. Gainer, flip-flop, full quick. Great dismount, and Agina Simpkins erases the memories of last year. Agina's mom, Patricia Johnson, looking proud and a little bit relieved. Simpkins with a 9825. Utah coach Greg Marsden, the winningest gymnastics coach in NCAA history, calmly taking in the events. The youths are on the floor. That's Amy Trepanier. And everyone remembers Amy. They will always remember Amy in Utah. Pulling off that performance last year that won them the national title. Let's see how she does here. Starts out with a very difficult full twisting double back. Watch the full twist on the first clip. But it's amazing that Amy is even out here. She had serious back problems. It almost ended her career at the beginning of the season. She spent a month in a brace. But Julianne, you know better than anyone that these gymnasts are remarkably tough athletes. That's very true, and this sport puts a lot of strain on your back on every event, but of all of them, I think this would probably be the easiest on her back. Here's the last pass, whip through, double twist, good height. She won this event at regionals, and they need a good score from her now. This is her big tumbling run. Flip-flop, layout, layout, two layouts in a row. Oh, Arnold goes down. Yachlin can't believe it. That's two falls off beam. Georgia will have to count one of them. All right, we're going to go over to the vault now. Leah Homa of UCLA getting ready for her first attempt. The three main things the judges will look for is high off the horse distance and landing. Look at that, a perfect landing. She sticks that one. And that's good for a 9.85 for Leah Homa. Meanwhile, a very disappointed Suzanne Yachlin is Kim Arnold scores only 9-3 on the beam. So a shaky start for Georgia, to say the least. Alabama is on top after two rotations. Back with more in a moment.
Back at the Georgia Coliseum, here are the standings. Alabama and Utah are a rotation ahead of the rest of the field. They will have buys in this next round. Up next, UCLA moves to the uneven bars. Michigan is on beam, and Georgia tries to pick up some ground on the floor. Here's Karima Mero from UCLA, majoring in sociology. Julianne, you've been impressed with this UCLA team this year. How would you characterize the team? Well, they're definitely more like a Georgia team. They're risk takers. They have a lot of difficulty. And I think a team to reckon with in the future. And they've been much more consistent this year, and that will only improve. Watch this high release move. She flies over the bar, called it to Kotchev. Double layout back flip just now. Oh, that cannot be done better. Nice job by Merrill. There's a giant half. These moves are difficult because you really can't see the bar until you actually grab. Watch the momentum as she sets up for this dismount. Perfectly straight body and a great landing. Marrow energizes the Bruins with a 9-9-2-5. And over on the floor, Lori Strong trying to do the same for the Bulldogs. They really need to get kick-started here. Here's a two-and-a-half twisting layout back flip. Over-rotated and stepped out of bounds. That's one-tenth for each foot out of bounds, so she had one-tenth in deductions there, plus the steps out of the tumbling path. Well, that is very uncharacteristic of Lori Strong. She's usually so solid and doesn't make mistakes like that very often. That's a very difficult path to land because she's facing forward on the landing. It's much more difficult. Handspring front full twist. Not a real difficult pass. Well, you almost get the sense that Georgia is trying just a little too hard, trying to dig themselves out of that hole. And that's a common reaction to a pressure situation when you have to come up with a routine. You do press too hard, and here she just over-rotates a little bit too much, steps out of bounds. A 9-7-0 for Lori Strong. This is a close-knit Georgia team unified in all efforts, especially when it comes to defending themselves against their biggest rivals of all time, the Tide of Alabama. The Hatfields and the McCoys, the Roadrunner and the Coyote, these rivalries pale in comparison to the one between three-time champion Georgia and two-time champion Alabama. Everything isn't peachy between the neighboring states. Their contrasting styles and diverse attitudes have resulted in a rivalry unmatched in gymnastics. A lot of people are critical now of people who are candid and say what's on their mind and, and uh, you know, get a little spirited and a little feisty. But, you know, I think as long as it's, it doesn't get out of hand, um, uh, you know, it's great for our sport. In February, at a meet in Georgia, the two coaches were involved in a dispute over extenders for the uneven bars, a confrontation that turned personal and ugly. I learned a lesson, and it was unfortunate. But I really feel like um, all the attention that's surrounding it was, was maybe... Um, not in the best interest of the sport. Uh, in that particular incident, it was a very emotional period of time for me, and um, emotionally spent and just was a little too spontaneous for my own good. <laughs> the intense feelings go well beyond the gymnastics floor and have created plenty of tension between the fans of the dogs and the Crimson Tide. The crowds are not as exciting, the gymnasts are not as energetic, they're not as fun to watch. I, I just think that uh, the rivalry is very intense. And I see Georgia as um, real arrogant, uh, very uh, hard-nosed group of uh, people over there. I think the key difference between Georgia and Alabama uh, is the fact that uh, the coach, Suzanne, is a really uh, dynamic, uh, diverse individual that just brings a lot of glue. They seem to be rather cocky and arrogant, and their coach just 
I don't know. She's, she's definitely not very popular around here. I think the fans have really rallied to get behind their teams, which is the way it should be. And I personally think that it adds a great deal 